Welcome back to Ruby the Elite. And today we continue on with the project of the Helix, book 10, the end. In the great state of Texas, you have to inspect your scooters. Cost seven bucks each, and in order to get it registered, it must be done. So going up to our local Valvoline, no sweat. We look forward to it though, because that means it's finally time to ride. When you ride your Honda Helix around town, nobody ever has a clue what you're riding. Maybe 5% of the people know what it is. That's why I want to put the decals back on the scooter so that people have a clue what I'm riding. It starts with this small one. I know it's not very big, but it's replacing what was originally on that wraparound that I took off. I think I should have bought a white decal. I might replace this, but it is what it is. But let's move on to the Helix decals. These are the only variant left that you can purchase. When you go to put them on the bike, make sure you take the far left corner and have it go to where the trunk crease is and then have it go along the bottom line of the white panel. This will line the decal up perfectly. If you do it on both sides, then you won't have any difference in the placement. It'll look perfect. Don't worry if you get any you know, little bubbles on the decal. This happens from time to time. If you do, don't try to press them out with a credit card. That might just rip the decal and cause more harm than good. All you gotta do is take a small X-Acto knife or razor blade, put a tiny hole into the little blister, and then just press it down. It'll go back to looking perfect. You'll never see the hole, trust me. Make sure you also prep your panels for the decals. First going over it with a degreaser, then alcohol. If you prep these properly, these decals will stay on for years to come. I've seen it so many times where people place them over dirty panels and then wonder why they start peeling up in a few months. You know, I was excited when I found these because they're in white letters. If memory serves me right, I think these were for either a red or a black scooter, but I don't recall exactly what years. You know, I did look for the emblems that were from like 86, 87, 88. I'm not sure of those mid to late 80s. They came with, you know, it just said Helix and it was an emblem. But they don't sell those anymore. And the only used ones I found, somebody wanted $100 for it. I just didn't think that. It was worth that. These look a little bit more modern, and I'm glad that I use these instead of shelling out that kind of money. Now when you go down the road, people know it's a Helix. They say, what is it? Point to the decal. They came out perfect, though. The placement on both sides is exactly the same. And it almost looks like I knew what I was doing. Now you know that it's a Helix. I'm glad I found these. I think I paid like $19 a piece for them. That big Honda decal in the back, that's going to take some getting used to. I almost wish I would have just put the wing and not Honda. I forgot to share this with you. This is the Wii Bike parts I purchased. Those side visors, that front garnish around the windshield. Also, that front grill. There is something in red that I'll share that later when I install it. The total though for the parts was $69.25. The cost of the shipping, $65.75 for a grand total of $135. This is the part number of those Helix decals if you care. Let's take a quick look at both sides of the wheels so we can make a memory. That way we know how it's supposed to look once we go to reinstall it. Unfortunately, I have to lay on the floor to do this because I couldn't do it on my lift. But luckily I have my impact wrench and then just a regular socket on the other side made easy work. 
of the long axle that you have to remove. Now, when you remove the axle, it should come out very easily. Just by doing a few taps on the end of the long bolt, we'll get it started. And then after that, just by lightly pulling, it should come out. If it doesn't, then you don't have any grease on your axle and you need to put some on it. I've seen people taking a hammer and hammering away. It shouldn't have to be hammered on. Also, you have these two ends and they're called dust covers that are in my hand right now. Those also should stay on. If they don't, put some grease on the inside of them and then push them back on. It makes for an easier installation if you're not trying to hold everything in place and then banging away at it with a hammer. Now over time, if your bike is older, then you probably are going to need to do these things and it should be done anyway. It's part of regular maintenance to make sure that that is greased up. The tire that's on here looks amazing. You know, you'd never think it was a 25 year old tire, but we replaced it with the hiding out tire. And now I'm glad I did. Now let's go ahead and put on our stripe kit. I've got on the flash so that you could see how it glows in white. If you decide to buy one of these kits in a different color, they do glow in other colors besides white. But since I had white panels, that's why I chose this. Plus I really like the idea of not having it seen during the day. It looks silver and matches the rim. But this really only takes 10 to 15 minutes tops to put this on each side. And it's so much easier, like I've mentioned in the past, to do it with the tire off the bike. Trying to put this on when the tire's on the bike, good luck. It's going to look like crap. Just the next time you go to put a new set of tires on, if you want to do this, that's the time to do it. And just by using this razor blade over both pieces that connect the ends, and it came out perfect. Couldn't ask for a better job than that. I cleaned the rim the same way I did my panels, just by using some degreaser and then after that some rubbing alcohol. I wanted to make sure that these stayed on for as long as possible. Looks really good. Here's what it looks like when you got the flash on or at night. You're just going to see a big circle. And then during the day. Can't even hardly tell it's installed. All right, let's go on to replacing whatever nastiness is in our master cylinder. Now I removed these screws a little while ago. I was going to work on this, then I got sidetracked. So we're back to opening this up and the screws are on very tight. So I don't think anybody's ever been in this. Now I'm wrapping some rags around it. I just don't want to get any fluid on any of my paint. I have the gloves on because I was working in the tire area. So that's just for me to explain why I still have them. You really don't have to wear gloves while doing this. The fluid is not going to really hurt you. At least I don't think it will. <laughs> Anyways, I've never had any problems getting it on my hands. So I think you're fine. Let's see what is... Oh yeah, this is just gross. This has never been... There is all kinds of nastiness almost looks like jelly inside here we're gonna go over this I got a toothbrush and I'm gonna just try to get it as clean as I can get all of the old stuff out we're gonna soak it all up because there's really no reason to bleed this nastiness through I'm gonna bleed the brakes in a moment but I'm not gonna go over that with you or record it there's really no reason there's so many videos on YouTube that show you how to do it. Revzilla, whatever you want to watch. There's just tons of content on that. I don't want to uh, beat that dead horse. Look at the bottom. You can see. You know, use a con swab. We'll be able to get the rest of it out. I mean, you don't want any of this going through. Look at all the nastiness on this diaphragm. Looks like snot. I bought a brand new one. 
You're supposed to replace this anyways over time. And of course, this was way past the time. I just got done filling up this little reservoir. I've already bled the brakes. And we'll go ahead and close it on up. Now, I'm not going to show you, like I said, how to bleed the brakes, but we're going to replace the brake pads next. Again, 25 years they've been on the bike. Even though there's no mileage on the bike, they should still be replaced after this long. I don't trust them. But we're going to go ahead and screw this all down tight. I cleaned up the little glass, the looking glass in the front, so you could actually see the fluid in there. Because that was all caked up too. There you go. Now my Helix is a 1999. If you have a 1993 or older, then this is not what you see on your scooter. You have a different setup and you're going to have to use a different source on how to replace those brake pads because they changed it. 94 on. So we're going to start by removing our long pin. And once you remove the pin, then you'll be able to slide the two brake pads from the top through the bottom. This is very simple to do. You know, if you've got a lot of miles on your bike and it doesn't seem to be stopping, you're going to see how easy it is to do this. This pin is bone dry. We're going to put some lubricant on it. And we're also going to lubricate the back of each one of the new pads. And that's going to help with any kind of noise. We don't want any brake squeal. Now these look, they actually look brand new folks. But again, the surface being 25 years old, how reliable are they? I don't know. I mean, they might be able to work for another 10 years. They might be able to work for another 10 minutes. I'm not taking a chance. Now the pistons are pretty much pushed all the way in because these pads still have the same thickness as what a new one would. This is your spring. This is the orientation that it goes in. This helps to keep the pads in place. All right, now that we have that back in, this sill glide is what I use. You put a little bit on your pin, and you put a little bit on the back of each one of the brake pads. A little goes a long way. But you definitely want to put some on these parts. That way, when you put your new brakes on, they're going to stop and not make a bunch of noise. A bunch of squealing. Now that we have that lubricated, we'll do the same thing to the pads on the back. Again, tiny amount. Being very careful not to get it on the front of the pad. Otherwise, it's going to delay your stop for a little while. I mean, eventually it will wear off. But you want to make sure just to be careful just to get it on the back. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change my gloves because I don't want to get any of this on. Let me find a place to set this down. I don't want to get any of this on the pads while I install them. All right. We slide it all the way up. holding it in place with her hand. This is the part number of the new pads, if you care. Now you can see at the top there's a little slide. It's a little slot there that you can slide into. That's exactly where you need to have the pads. In order for the pin to go through the bottom, if they're not in that little slot, you're not going to be able to fit that pin through it. We'll go ahead and put the other one on. And again, 
it's going to slide right in, which it did. Just want to again show you, now that everything's installed, the pin goes through each one of the pads, and that's how the spring should look. There we go, we're all set. Back on the internet and on We Bike of Japan's site to buy the lower cowls. I figured, why not? We'll replace them all. They came with these new reflectors, which are really cool. They're kind of a silver color and they kind of match the white. Well, I took this and put it on temporarily just to see how it would look. And I really like the contrast between the black and white. I'm glad I didn't buy white lower cowls. You can see they look so much nicer than the gray. There's no, there's no glossiness to the gray. It's just dull plastic. I have to admit though, these did test my patience trying to fit these with those white cowls. It took me forever. And you know what? I don't know if I'd buy them again <laughs> just because of what a pain and the padded you know what it was to put them on they shouldn't be that hard to put on they do look so much better though than the gray you know after I installed them though with those new silver visors it looked so much better though the new reflectors those new Honda decals I put on but I'll show you what the rear looks like once I get to that point on the other side. On the other side I have to put some protective tape the same way that Honda did. Now I tried to take it off, see if I could move it over to the new panel. Nah, that didn't work. So I bought some of this fiberglass fabric with an aluminum reflective type tape. And it got pretty good reviews. So this is going to protect this panel because they didn't give you anything like this. And that's what I purchased. 13 bucks. It took a little while to put it all on, but I figured, you know what? Hopefully it's going to protect this from any heat. Since this is on the side where the exhaust is, just putting and piecing it all together and it only took me about a half an hour or so, and now I'm hoping it does the protected need that I put it on there for. Wiping up the other side just to make sure you couldn't see any of it. And now go ahead and install it. Most of the issues I had with installing really weren't in the back. They were connecting it to that front cowl. That's where all my time was spent going back and forth trying to get it all to work. Let me show you now the last thing that I did order from WeBoyk the last go around and that is this rear rack. I've never seen one of these before in Chrome. They're all over the place in eBay and black charging like $60 for it. This was the last item I had ratted out because I wanted to show you it getting installed. But it was only $34 and the materials look better. It installs very simply too. I'm not sure why folks have had issues with that one that's purchased on eBay where they have to buy bolts for it. You don't need to buy anything extra. When you remove this top grab bar, you're going to take the bolt that once connected it and you're going to screw it all the way into that black grab bar. And then you can see there is steel that will go around it and that's going to hold it in place. I'll give you a better photo of it in a moment. When you add the shipping and handling for everything else, it kind of makes sense to go this way. Plus I've not seen this one. The materials look better than the black one. Overall it's going to match those chrome pieces I added in the front as well. Now the bolt that was holding down that grab bar, you're just going to go ahead and you're going to screw it all the way into the black. So just the head is showing. Then when you screw in this Allen right here, it is going to hold it in place. You don't need to put a bolt all the way through 
that first one. I've seen so many people do it that way and it just doesn't make any sense. If you follow what I just showed you, it'll install very easy. You're not going to be able to move it and it holds it in place. You know, putting this on, it wasn't really a necessity. I think I just bought it because it was chrome, to be honest. I don't plan on putting a top box on the back. I guess I have this if I ever really needed it. Oh, I forgot to put these on. I have this if I ever really needed it, but I don't really see myself ever putting one of those big top boxes. Unless I'm traveling somewhere that I really needed something like that, it was more or less for show, to be honest. But it looks really nice, doesn't it? And after all the money I spent, I've got no regrets. She came out gorgeous. Not only on the outside, but also under the panels as well. The white panels, what, an, what a difference it makes to have a white scooter finally from a red one. You know, again, I like the Honda Red, but we needed a change, and this was perfect. The new panels on the bottom as well as the top, they look great. I'm glad I bought those lower cowls because they really make a nice contrast. They match the seat. I also put these little Honda decals on the front, kind of an homage to the late 80s when they had those emblems on. The front with the chrome, the visors in chrome, gave it a nice little touch of something different. Putting those brand new blue bulbs in, very easy to see when it's sunny out. Wanted to make sure you guys were aware of that. Starts right up like a champ. Running perfect. Look at the halo in the front when you're out in the sun. That's all you see. I've already gotten quite a few comments on how cool that looks. I can't agree more. All the little things we added, all those gadgets, the sight glass there at the bottom. Very cool addition. The bike looks like brand spanking new. The goal was to take that abused bike and turn it into a diamond. I think that was accomplished. Look at the brake light in the back. Keep in mind that that only comes on when you push on the brake. Everything looks just beautiful. I'm so excited to finally have it done. I've had the bike for all this time. And thank God it's complete. Well, that's going to do it for the project of the Helix. As I said in the beginning, this is the end. Actually, is it though? We've got more videos to come with this beautiful bike. And we'll do some versus videos against that Morphus. I'll tell you exactly what I think since I have an unbiased opinion. What a lot of fun though this project was. I couldn't ask for a better result. I'm going to leave you with some videos. If you haven't seen my channel, please subscribe. Take a look at all the content I have. All kinds of different videos on servicing Honda scooters. Enjoy watching them. Subscribe if you haven't. I'll see you all soon.